Hi, my friends. Welcome. This is the Back to Me podcast, and this is Heather, and I am super excited that you're here. You are going to hear some tips and some tricks and some ideas to help you live your happiest and healthiest self. I call it Back to Me because when you are taking care of yourself, Back to Me, then you can take better care of others, and we can all make the world a better place. This is Wellness Your Way, and I am super happy that you're here. Hi, my friend. Thanks so much for listening to this entire podcast. If you found it useful and you're like me and you like like helping others, please feel free to share this. Just give it a like. Give it a comment. If you found something useful in it, there's a chance that someone else will find something useful as well. Also, if you have any questions at all, I can absolutely help and I would love to help, you can email me at heather at prosperityflowcoaching.com. If you want more of this awesome content, You can follow me on Instagram, Heather Stewart Coaching. You can follow me on Facebook, Prosperity Flow Coaching. And I have a personal request. I want to help as many people as I can with these podcasts. And if you could give me a review, hopefully a good one. (laughs) If you could share, if you could send this out into the world, I would truly appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day. And I hope that you find your way to wellness by getting back to me. Take care, my friend. Hello, my friend. How are you? I hope you are having a super amazing day. You know, I've been spending, I, this is Heather. This is the Back to Me podcast. I was just so excited to get into this one. I have been working away all day so far and um, listening to 80s music. So yes, <laughs> as, as my husband says, I'm a closet rocker. I listen to 80s music. I'm a child of the 80s. And when I listen to it, it reminds me of so many things. Um, those are formative years. When you're a teenager, early 20s, those are formative years. Those are when you're starting to figure out who you are, what you want to do. Sometimes you don't figure it out and that's okay. I mean, mine has changed. Mine has changed multiple times and I'm okay with that because as I learn something new, I think, wow, that that's really cool. I didn't know that about myself. Now I'm going to go do that. And it's okay to reinvent yourself many, many times. And today, today's topic is, um, are you... Is it, are you being too hard on yourself or maybe you're not being hard enough on yourself? And I was thought not to mean that you should beat yourself up. Don't take it that way at all. I would never, never want someone to um, have really negative self-talk that think about the way you talk to yourself. Um, would you ever speak to a friend that way? That's a really good, that's a really good measure of, um, how your self-talk is. Would you say that to someone that you cared about? But the, are you being too hard on yourself? So listening to 80s music, you know, I was thinking about, because it brings up events in my life and things that happened to me. And, you know, I went to see Sarah McLaughlin the other day. Oh my gosh, the soundtrack to my younger years was Sarah McLaughlin, as probably with a lot of women from my, from my era. But I was thinking about all the things, all the dreams that I had, all the goals that I wanted to achieve, all the things that I thought I would do. And um, it's taken me a long time to figure out how I work best and don't or um, do my best not to procrastinate do my best not to drag my heels and do my best to be accountable to myself. So I think about that because I think about goals that I've had, things that I wanted to do. And I felt, I'm going to be really honest, half-assed about some of them. Some of them I was really half-assed at it. I didn't put in the effort that I could have put in. And that makes me step, that always has made me step back and think, well, did I actually want that or did I just think I wanted it? 
Because if I, I like to think that if I really wanted it, I would have not done all the things that I do to sabotage myself. And I fully admit, I have self-sabotage techniques. Oh my gosh, I have a whole menu. <laughs> and I, I don't know anybody who doesn't. Everyone has things that they get themselves caught up in, um, excuses that they make. But when you boil it down, really, um, are you, what is causing those things? Are you avoiding the thing that you are dreaming of because... Um, it's not your idea. It's not something you really want to do. You just, it sounded like a good idea. And if that's true, heck, take it off your to-do list. My gosh, it's easy to clear a to-do list with, oh, I actually don't want to do that. Psh, psh, gone. I've started projects and abandoned them because I've realized later, oh, that wasn't my idea. Actually, that was somebody else's idea. If you've listened to the podcast, you know, I am a bit of an ideas doula. Like, I'll talk to people and ideas just start flooding into my brain. And I have in the past been mistaken and thought they were all mine for me to do. But actually, they're just for me to give away. <laughs> if you ever want an ideas session, just uh, just give me a message and we can sit and generate tons of ideas for you if you're not, if that's not your uh, zone of genius. But abandoning things sometimes feels like quitting. And I know I did a podcast on quitting. So this isn't about quitting. This is about if it's something you want to do, finding a way to hold yourself accountable so that you can achieve the goal that you want. So I don't mean to be, you know, you not to be hard on yourself. You know, sometimes we're hard on ourselves because we haven't achieved something we wanted to achieve or thought we wanted to achieve. And then we just carry around that negativity with us. Oh, yeah, sure. I could go run this company, but you know, I tried one time and it didn't work. <laughs> well, well, first of all, nothing ever works the first try. Come on, let's be serious. You didn't learn to walk the first time you stood up and you didn't learn to do drive a car the first time you got into a car and you didn't learn to do, I'm trying to think of all things I ride a bicycle. Oh my gosh. One of the times when I was learning to ride a bicycle, I was so freaked out. I actually hit a tree. What do you do? Don't look at the tree. What did I do? I looked at the tree. Anyway, I take time to learn things, and I'm, that's just part of the way I am. So if you're still carrying around the baggage of things that you didn't achieve, put those bags down. Don't carry them. If it's something you can still work on and you still want to do it, pick it up and let's go. Like, start making your plan. Start saying, I want this by this date, and this is how I'm going to achieve it. I was talking to a coach recently that I was um, working with, and he has a massive goal. I mean, when he said the goal, I got scared. <laughs> now, he's giving himself um, 24, so I think he's giving himself 20 years to reach it, but it's a massive goal, when that's pretty amazing. And he's very focused, and he's got his plan now. He has his plan. We talked about how he was going to plan to get there. Um, your goal doesn't have to be massive. Doesn't have to be massive. And plans are just a roadmap, really. They don't have to be scary. But if it's something that you want, still want, something new you want, and you're just sitting and not starting, there's lots of reasons people don't start things. I mean, there's, I mean, I've been talking a little bit about really, is it? something you actually want. But there's also the, oh my God, what if I fail? Psh, that's not a real thing. It's just a lesson. Oh my God, what if I succeed? Yeah. But why would that be scary? <laughs> I, I know there's a whole, there's, there's layers and layers and layers of things that go even not even consciously to affect your behaviors and your best your most best way to help you get what you want is to, one, this is what I do. I write down what I want. I write down what I want. And I write down when I want it. I write down the things I'm, that are going to have to happen to make, the, what, what success would look like for that. Um, what's going to have to happen for that to be successful? 
evaluating that against the date that I've given myself, am I being reasonable? You know, it's not like I can, so I don't know if everyone, if, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I am also an artist. Um, and I, I, I'm a professional artist. I mean, I've sold paintings. So, and I have an Etsy store and I have, you know, I could have a goal on my list to paint 100 paintings by the end of this year. That's not going to happen. That's, that would be dedicating 100% of my waking hours to painting, which would be pretty cool. But then I would miss all my coaching clients because I love coaching as well. And I would miss, you know, having time to relax. So hold up your, everything you need to do to reach your goal and what success would look like against how long it will take. And then decide if it's reasonable. And if it's not, adjust it because you're the boss of you. Even if you have a job, even if you have a boss, you are ultimately the master of your domain. You are the boss of you and you get to decide what road you take. Some, and you can argue with me if you want. You can book a meeting with me and argue with me about whether that's true or not. And I will help you see that you are the master of your domain. So here we are. Are you being too hard on yourself because of things that you have wanted and not achieved? Either put them down or pick them up. And then are you not work? Are you not being hard enough on yourself? And I don't mean that in a negative way. Are you not holding yourself accountable? Are you disappointing yourself? Would you take those actions that you had committed to someone else and let them drop? If you're like me, you would go out of your way to achieve what you promised to someone else. But I have been known to disappoint myself. And when that happens, I give myself a pause to try and figure out why I did it. Right? Oh, and friends. So I am in the midst of creating, I think once a month, I'm just going to give you a book to read or something to look at or give you my opinion of a book. And I think the first book I'm going to talk about actually speaks to why we self-sabotage ourselves. It's called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. If you haven't read it, oh my gosh, check it out. But that will be coming, this is August, that will be coming in September. So I have time to, you know, gather my thoughts. And that's me making a commitment to me of something that I want to do. So stay tuned. If you need some help, obviously, always, you can reach out to me. And if you haven't been on the website lately, um, pop over. It's uh, it's still a little under construction. You know, there's still a beautiful, more beautiful website coming. But there is a quiz there and, that I've created. And I'd be super interested in your feedback on the quiz, just helping you determine if you work, want to work on something in your wellness wheel, which one that, where, where you might start. And you know that when I talk about wellness, I do talk physical, but also relationships, professional, financial, emotional, spiritual. Uh, did I say them all? <laughs> There's six of them. <laughs> Go take the quiz. You'll get it. My friend, I hope you have an amazing and outstanding day and take care of yourself. I will see you again very soon. Hello, my friend. Welcome Wednesday's wellness tip. And today I'm talking about dreams. I've been listening to 80s music. Okay. Dreams. And um, are you not being hard enough on yourself? Or maybe you're being too hard on yourself? Have a listen. Let me know what you think. Take care and I will see you soon.